Good afternoon, folks. It's David Burroughs, Chief Strategist at Barometer Capital Management. It's October the 16th. And as usual, for the middle of October, we've been receiving phone calls asking whether some of the recent ups and downs in the market are being triggered by uh, the fact that the economy is going into recession uh, or if it is typical seasonality. So I thought it might be timely to go through some of our work uh, uh, to take a look at our expectations uh, and how we are positioned in the market. Uh, here's a picture of the S&P 500 over the last number of years. We know the market rallied from 2012 through 2015 and then corrected or consolidated in a quite a wide trading range for about 16 months until it broke out and then had another very substantial run between 2016 and 2018. 2018 kicked off some volatility early in the year, February uh, through June, and then some substantial volatility through December. And again, the question was, is this the end of the cycle uh, or is this a correction? Our premise at the beginning of the year was a substantial correction, a bull market correction, but not the end of a secular bull market. Since then, the market has rallied back towards highs. And the question now is, with all of the trade news and all of the concern around Brexit and the slowing economic data, is this the top of the market or do we expect things to go further? Well, the first thing and most importantly to say is that when markets work their way sideways for a long period of time, uh, it tends to be correction. Uh, corrections come both in time and in price. We got both over the last 18 months. And although 18 months in the scheme of things is not a long time, it feels like a lifetime. And during that period, as people became more and more skeptical, you've seen money move its way from things that are tied to the economy to investments that are more insulated from the economy or more defensive in nature. Bonds, utilities, telecom stocks, and real estate investment trusts. So here we are close to all-time highs. It's the middle of October. The question is where to from here? If we look at a daily chart of the U.S. stock market, we see the low in December. We saw a higher low in May. We saw a higher low in July. We saw a higher low in August. We saw a higher low in September. Every single time coming down and testing this long-term upward sloping moving average. So higher highs and higher lows tends to be quite constructive. Last week, after a move down through the months of August and September, we had a good sharp reversal at the end of the week, and the question is where to from here. So first of all, we think that that was quite constructive. Uh, when we look at a point and figure price chart, we see the lows in December, a higher low in June, higher lows through August, September, and October, and currently working way higher. Point and figure chart is quite constructive, pointing to a target of 3,600 on the S&P sitting currently just below 3,000. When we look at the NASDAQ, NASDAQ has been leading the way. And yes, nice recovery off the December lows, higher lows in February, May, July, August, and September. Again, last week, breaking above this uh, uh, short downtrend we saw <clears throat> in the months of August and September. So market's been acting quite constructively as a whole. Certainly some group better than others. But what have investors been doing? Investors have been incredibly bearish and cautious. So far this year, $380 billion has been moved into money market funds. That is more money that went into money market in 2008 as we went into the financial crisis. So investors are incredibly cautious. What are we seeing from our breadth work that looks at the health of the market underneath the surface? Our long-term breadth models remained positive through August and September. The short-term indicators that we use were negative for about a month, but over the last week turned back higher. Percent of stocks above the 50-day moving average moving higher. Percent of stocks above the 150-day moving average, long-term trend moving higher quite constructive. Last week, we had a reduction in the tension around trade. We didn't have a solution, but it did not escalate. And it looks like it could be getting better. The market voted with its feet. We had the largest day of upside volume versus downside volume we've seen since the year 2000. So that means people reaching up to buy as opposed to people coming down to sell at the bid price. 
the market is incredibly defensive and underpositioned. Let's take the lens back to a longer term picture. I thought this was an excellent chart looking at long term momentum in the market as measured by a monthly momentum indicator MACD. We know that when monthly momentum goes from negative to positive, it tends to stay positive for a long period of time. This is monthly momentum turning positive in 1995. Upward momentum stayed in place until 1999. We had another very significant turn in momentum in 2003, coming out of the tech wreck. Again, momentum stayed positive from 2003 through 2007. Another significant turn higher in 2009, March, where monthly momentum for the market stayed positive through until 2012. Significant turn higher in 2012, lasted through until 2015. Momentum turned positive again in 2017 when the market kicked off a two-year rally and then negative over the last 18 months just turned positive. So things getting better. Let's look at volatility. Volatility tends to spike when people get concerned about the near-term outlook for the market. Well, as contrary to that, volatility has been collapsing or falling sharply over the last few weeks. No sign of trouble here. Let's look at some of the key stocks. When markets kick off new rallies, leading stocks should lead. Apple, after trading sideways through ups and downs since the early part of 2018, this past week broke out to make a new all-time high. JP Morgan yesterday reporting its earnings, beat revenues, beat estimates uh, for earnings, uh, beat in a number of different business areas, said the consumer is very strong, broke out to a new all-time high. Some of the railroads doing the same thing, some of the machinery stocks doing the same things. Now let's flip the coin and let's look at the fixed income market. This is the place people go to hide if they think things are going to be weak. We know that in 2014 investors got to one side of the boat, bonds rallied and then had what's called an outside reversal where we started at a new high and reversed to below the low of the week before, and that marked the end of the bond rally, and the stock market took off over the next two years. The next time we saw a peak was at the end of 2015, as markets were at the crescendo of a sell-off. Same thing, an outside reversal, started at a new high, reversed, closed below the low from the week before. That kicked off the next two-year stock market rally. About four weeks ago, the U.S., bond market hit a new high, had an outside weekly reversal. In effect, tried to rally again last week, failed to make a new high, and had another outside reversal very similar to the one that happened in 2016. So <clears throat> let's look at that same thing another way. The amount of dollars flowing into the asset class. You got to extremes in the bond market in 2016 when there are big flows into the bond market. We had big flows into the bond market last week. And despite those big flows, the bond market was unable to make a new high. It made a lower high, and then it's failing. It looks as though that was an exhaustion move in bonds. And now people are very, very heavily invested in defensive assets. Let's look at int long-term interest rates another way. You had a very sharp move down in, in bond yields in 1986 when the relative strength got to a very low level, it reversed, kicking off a big rally in the stock market. Okay. We had an exhaustion in the bonds in the early 2000s. We've had an exhaustion in the bonds recently. Very low relative price strength. Notice that we bottomed three times around the same level. We thought the secular low in rates was 2016. This certainly retested it, but was unable to make a lower low. We think that trend is reversing in interest rates. And that's very significant because our job is to invest for the cycle, not necessarily for the next three or four months. And while people have been very cautious over the last few months and moving money into defensive assets, our sense is that what will do well over the course of the next cycle are things that are tied to the strengthening economy, not the weakening economy. So U.S. interest rates, bottom they rally, they retest lows to a higher low. We're seeing U.S. rates move higher, long-term bond yields. Long-term bond yields in Germany 
and China and Japan, in fact, have improved even more than in the U.S. So around the world, it looks like we've seen an exhaustion in the bond rally. And that's positive if you believe that the economy may be going through a bottoming process. A low in bond yields in 2012 kicked off a significant stock market rally. A low in bond yields in 2016 marked the beginning of a stock market rally. And we believe the lows in the bond market in July and August is what is harboring the beginning of a third rally in the stock market. What else is changing? <clears throat> When people are concerned, they go to hide in safe assets and they consider the U.S. dollar to be a safe asset. So U.S. dollar has been very strong until recently when it began to break this uptrend, money coming out of U.S. dollar, which tends to mean it's going into more risk-oriented assets. So people get to one side of the boat and then it starts going the other way. Last week, despite the fact that they have underperformed year-to-date, economically sensitive groups started to outperform. Financials, cyclicals, companies attached to China. Things that underperformed last week. Bond proxies, defensive securities, uh, secular growth securities. Things that are not so tied to the economy that have been very strong so far in the year. So we have been invested for what we believe is a reacceleration in the economy. The market is not looking at current data. It looks forward 12 months and tries to guess where things are going. Market is starting to show an interest in more economically sensitive securities. What else gets helped when the US dollar starts to weaken? Global stocks. Global stocks have traded sideways from 2007 until recently, broke out to new highs. Weaker US dollar should be good for emerging markets, European markets, <clears throat> Asian markets, and we know our breadth model for all of those markets have started to show substantial improvement. What else should be doing well if we think the economy can reaccelerate? Well, semiconductors. Semiconductors are a basic building block. And as of this past week, semiconductors relative to the S&P hit a new all-time high, meaning that they are outperforming the U.S. stock market, it's something you would not expect to see if we were headed into a recession. This is Taiwan Semiconductor, one of the largest semiconductor companies in the world. It's a $250 billion market cap. After trading sideways for 18 months, broke out to new highs. So leading stocks in leading sectors in economically sensitive groups are breaking out. This, we believe, is a harbinger of the next leg of this bull market, the four steps forward, not just the recovery off the lows. A lot of talk about the inverted yield curve over the course of the year and the fact that when interest rates on a two-year bond are higher than the interest rates on a 10-year bond, that is the expectation that the economy will slow. The yield curve was inverted for a total of about six days in August, and since then it has been steepening, or long-term bonds are now uh, inter uh, yielding well above short-term bonds. That again is a sign that things may be reaccelerating. Morgan Stanley last week, looking at the model that they used to take multiple factors and forecast the likelihood of a recession, uh, their full model in green going into the 2008 recession was looking for a 50% probability of recession. Same thing in 2000. It's currently showing an 11% probability of recession, and that number is coming down. So here we are. We're in the middle of October. Uh, if you took the average of the last 30 years, the seasonal low for stocks tends to be the middle of October, in fact, October 11th. That was last week. Friday, a nice rally began. So the question is, where to from here? Over the last 30 years, 40% of the return in the S&P came after the middle of October. To put a point on it, after the middle of October, the next week was positive 96% of the time, up an average 1.5%. The next month was up 88% of the time, an average 2.6%. And the next three months was positive 99% of the time for an average 7%. Now that's for the whole market. If money starts coming out of defensive sectors, 
and into cyclical sectors, which definitely underperformed through August and September, then the return for the cyclical sectors should be very strong to finish the year. Now, there was a wobble in confidence again last week, and there was a lot of put buying. That's people buying insurance against the market. When there's been a big spike in put buying going into the middle of October, actually the returns over 20 days, 65 days, and 125 days even stronger. So our breadth work is positive. The S&P and the other major global stock markets are behaving constructively. Central banks around the world are cutting interest rates and being accommodative. The old term, don't fight the Fed. Global manufacturing data looks as though it bottomed in July and August and has been improving over the last two months. We think that we are set up for a typical fourth quarter rally. We believe we are in the early stages of a recovery that should go on over the next two to two and a half years. And we continue to believe that the weakness through last year was the bull market correction and that we are into the next leg of this bull market. We will update with any new information. Please don't hesitate to call if you have any questions. Thanks so much.